Well, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome once again to another one of our In Conversations. And today we're in Manchester, where I'm delighted to be joined by Professor Rick Boddy, who has a chair in emergency medicine uh, at the Manchester University Hospital Foundation Trust, our great friends at MFT. Uh, but more significantly today, uh, for the purposes of our conversation, he's the industry and partnership lead for the uh, Manchester BRC Biomedical Research Centre, which we'll hear all about shortly. Before we get there, Rick, we always do this when we have, we have guests with us. Just tell people listening, watching this, a um, little bit about yourself, your background, as it is relevant to our conversation today. Yeah, well, good morning, everyone. I'm Rick Boddy, as uh, Richard says, I'm a professor of emergency medicine, and I work as a consultant in the NHS at Manchester Royal Infirmary. Um, I'm the group director of research and innovation at Manchester University NHS Foundation Trust. Um, so we host um, quite a bit of NIHR infrastructure. We've got the clinical research facility for early phase trials. We've got the applied research centre for the later phase stuff getting into practice. And we've got the biomedical research centre, which is about experimental medicine. And as Richard mentioned, I'm the industry and partnerships lead for the uh, biomedical research centre. So in that role, uh, my, my responsibility is to develop our strategy for how we will uh, partner and collaborate with industry how we'll work together through the five years, what sort of things we'd like to achieve. Right. So this, I mean, one of the things I think a lot of people watching and listening to this will be smaller companies uh, or even the larger companies. And uh, we have a conversation um, later on today, actually, with um, bits of the various research infrastructure. It really is very, very, very complicated. It's taken me about 12 years to work out the difference between NAHR and UKRI, for example. Tell us where the BRC fits in all of that. And um, I think not everything does what it says on the tin, does it? It's a biomedical research centre, but it includes, it goes way beyond medicines, for example, which is why we're having this conversation. It does. So the NIHR, the National Institute for Health and Care Research, originally set up the biomedical research centres to try and bridge the gap between bench and bedside, if you like, to accelerate translation of new discoveries into clinical practice. So you're absolutely right. It's not just about medicines. It's about all healthcare technologies that we might want to introduce, whatever sector of the life sciences industry that might relate to. Um, so the NIHR puts out a, a call for a competition for biomedical research centres every five years. And um, that's we've recently been up for renewal. So we were very lucky we got um, to, to get an expansion in our biomedical research centre, which has allowed us to expand our footprint. So the Manchester Biomedical Research Centre um, covers the middle of Manchester, but also reaches out to Salford and then to Lancashire. So we bring in the coastal communities. What you have to do when you design your BRC or Biomedical Research Centre is set out the themes that you're going to focus on. Now we've got 13, so I won't list them all here, um, but they, they cover quite a broad um, area of healthcare actually and quite relevant to our discussion today. For example, we've got a theme on advanced diagnostics and on advanced therapeutics, for example, and there's other areas of specific focus around cancer. For example, we've got three themes on cancer. Um, our, our job then is to, to, to bring together the academics at the university doing the discovery science with the clinicians at the NHS Trust uh, who are working on how we can apply those in practice. And of course, the missing link in all of that, really importantly, is industry, because we can't do that without industry. That's great. Well, that's a very, very lucid description of, uh, of where you're at and what you're trying to do. So you've just been you've got five years uh, ahead of you and um, people will be interested to know uh, how is the best. Where can they find that? Well, when we package this up, we'll put a link through to everything. What is the best way for uh, companies listening to this to engage with you? So we'll share the contact details with you. The best way for now is probably to get in touch. We're just about to launch. Look out for our launch events because that's going to be advertised. So it'd be great to see as many people as possible coming to engage with us, have a conversation about how we might work together and just feel free to get in touch. Our website will be revamped for the new BRC so you can get some information about the themes and the clusters that we have. Um, uh, but, but the best thing is to have a conversation with us and we can do a bit of matchmaking, see where there might be areas of common interest and try and signpost to the right people. Rick, that's great. So Rick, thanks for the 
chat. It was a great update on BRC. I'm sure you'll be getting a lot of interest from uh, from ABHR members. And listen, thanks for everything you do uh, for all of us uh, in your day job as a clinician. Stay strong. And uh, yeah, we wish you, we just hope things start warming up and uh, the winter doesn't really bite in the months ahead. But Rick, thanks very much for joining us today. Thanks very much indeed, Richard.